Welcome <laughs> to Ask an Early Adopter. I'm with my friend Dean. We're going to talk home battery subsidy and being with Amber because we mm. both have batteries and we're both with mm. Amber. Mm. I've now had a battery for six months. You have had your wow. battery for how long? Oh, it's about four, five years now, I think. Four, five years. Wow, yeah. there you go. Aficionado, should we say, with this whole weird and fabulous world of the wholesale market and home batteries. Yes. So, ooh, where to start? Ouch. So, uh, okay, so you have, first of all, tell me what you've got at home and I'll say what I've got at home. So I've got a, uh, I've got two Tesla Powerwall 2s. Okay. Uh, so that's a grand total. Of, I think it's about 27 kilowatt hours of available capacity. Yep. Uh, because I think they're 13.5 or something like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and um, that, you know, since we, I installed that, I, there's a fair bit of an outlay at the time. And uh, I thought, yes, I'll do two rather than one because that's what I thought would make sense. I didn't anticipate that I'd be in a situation where I'd never use grid power again. I actually I didn't. It was more of a case of let's just okay. shave and off that peak. How big is your right? solar array? Solar array now is around about 13, 12 or 13 kilowatts uh, gross. Dream. Right? <laughs> of 10, 10 kilowatts of which I can generate because right. yeah, because it's over overrated a little bit on the roof. Uh, okay. Yeah, but that's that's a more of a technicality. So um, you are, you're still on grid, but you are effectively off grid. Yeah, we spoke about this before. I remember when the little, you know, go, go off grid. I don't see too much purpose for going off grid because mm. why not have the ability to sell my surplus power to other people and, and allow other people to benefit. Although times are changing because guess what? I'm very jealous of people like Sarah here who get access to all these new batteries that are much, much cheaper. And now there's a subsidy. Right, which is where my battery comes in. So when I installed the first part of my battery, which was a 24 kilowatt hour SIG energy battery, uh, so that's three modules, eight kilowatt hours each, stackable but expandable. Uh, and I only have a 4.7 kilowatt array, so mm. not very big compared to yours. So I actually put that in, uh, in mid-March, and that was before the federal cheaper home battery subsidy came into play but i did get the state new south wales uh, state rebate mm. then the subsidy was announced i think it was literally the week after i got my battery installed and i was like god damn it <sighs> uh, which effectively makes batteries 30 percent cheaper mm. straight off the bat and i went i'm going to expand my battery so i took my 24 kilowatt hour battery which has been amazing to 48 kilowatt hours because over uh that winter period especially around May, we had like three price spikes, didn't we? And one of them was so long, it just kept going and going. And I had to tap out because I was like, I don't, can't I don't, get, you can't I don't, sell anymore. I can't sell anymore because I need it for the house because I don't want to pay 20 kilowatt hours yeah. to, to um, consume energy. Mm. And it was amazing. So in, now I actually haven't had my sixth bill yet for the six month period, but in the period up to, well, the five months, and that was before I expanded the battery, no energy bill. I've had no bill, not one bill. And I'm $761 in credit. So I'm doing quite well. And that's now I've obviously doubled my battery. I have a question for you. Winter seems to be when we get these price spikes where the prices go absolutely crazy, which means I can sell into the grid and make some serious coin off my battery. Mm. Um, what does summer usually look like? Or is summer it just used to be winter? like that too. Did it? It used to be like that. But I think it's hard. It's always hard to predict, but Summer was the time that the grid providers were worried because people would come home and turn their air conditioners on when you've got these sweltering temperatures. Right. Uh, I so think it'll be on those really hot days that potentially... Those really hot days, yeah. But you, summer, for those who don't realise, you have a longer day and you have a potentially more intense day as well. And so um, you, there's a lot of opportunity to generate lots of power during the day. Mm. But then, of course, when people come home, uh, they turn their air, con con air conditioners on. I think there's a bit of a behaviour change at studying as people have realised, hey, my solar panels don't make me much money during the day. I'll just leave the air conditioner on in the middle and of the day. The and so the cool. house is cooler. So they're arriving home earlier. So I believe, and people might be able to fact check me on this one, but I believe there was forecast to be some power, some or more uh, grid-related sort of challenges last summer, but okay. they didn't happen to the extent that they expected. Interesting. But I, I'd like someone that, you know, feel free to find that for me. But to, because And I, the reason I remember this is because I was waiting to... Make, some, make some money out of it, right? <laughs> um, but then that's starting to translate into the winter situation. Right. And I think we've had some weird 
weather patterns mm. that have exacerbated that a little bit. Mm. I, I just can't believe how much money... I just can't believe I haven't had a bill. Yeah. And that was with that 24 kilowatt hour size, which apparently I was speaking to Will Hall, who's the managing director of uh, Australia New Zealand of SIG Energy, and I was like, what, what kind of size are people putting in? And he said it was... I guess you need to average it out. But it was actually around that kind of 24, yeah. 28 kind of size because instead of people going, I think 16 used to be the average, mm. and instead of opting for a cheaper battery, they're actually just go, they're just making it bigger and mm. paying the same price potentially. And I think there's been a oh, lot of what, yeah. pent-up demand of people going, I'd love to get a battery, but they're too expensive. So you've got all these people jumping in now. Um, and, and just to answer anyone's questions, if you go, well, how, how do you fill that battery with only a uh, 4.7 kilowatt array? I don't just mm. fill it, obviously, from my solar. Um, in the middle of the, I fill it in the middle of the day when it's really cheap on the wholesale energy market. For example, today, $0.08 cents a kilowatt hour is the average I'd be paying. I just go charge. I've got a 10 kilowatt controller so I can put 10 kilowatts into that battery over that hour. And, and there you go. So That's it's, great. it's just fill. Boom. Done. Um, I'm probably only using about half that battery, but then that means I've got it there to sell into the evening. And in the evening, it can be like 36 cents, something like that, even if it's not a big price bike. So sell that little bit into the into the grid. So. And the good thing is when you're, even though your solar array is rising big enough to charge it in the in the winter months, you're able to take advantage of other people's. That's what I'm doing. Is what you, is effectively what and you're I do doing, that right? with the car as well. So I, I, or I just plug the car because I do have mm. a seven kilowatt charger out the front of the house so I can run that cable out to the street completely legally in a West Council footpath licence and I plug the car in at eight cents a kilowatt hour and I'm just, boom, taking full advantage of that. And that might take me a couple of days to go. I think I was 30% the other day. Um, I just wanted to really take advantage of that. So it was over kind of a four or five hour period and then I came back and just topped up to I think it was 80 or 90% the next day. But it's just so cheap. Mm. It's so cheap. Yeah. But then you get these price spikes, which is where you really pay off your battery so much quicker with those price spikes. They are amazing. So, yeah, what's the maximum you've seen it get to? What kind of money have you made over I think, a night? Uh, I think I did about $300 one night. Wow. Yeah, so overall, I just thank you, Amber. I, uh, thank you, Amber. I, I got we a, love you. I got a cash payment, or, or ca- if you call it cash, when it goes into your bank account. How much did you so cash around out? About $2,100. Recently, but look, I think this is no. By the way, this is no uh, affiliation with Amber or no, Sig Energy no, or Tesla or anything. But yeah, no, no, definitely. <laughs> just, just, just saying. <laughs> just loving it. <laughs> Feel free to give me more credit. Happy customers. Uh, so, <laughs> the um, look. The interesting thing is, we're going to be a victim of our own success. In what way? And I think we're already starting to see it as we sort of see this, you know, mid-season come on as more renewables start to hit the market generally at a. At a at a sort of a grid level. Mm. So as we start getting more industrial uh, renewables being added uh, and as more people sign up, the whole premise of this is the push down the prices for everybody. Mm. And so as more and more people get involved in virtual power plants, as more and more people mm. don't get inver- involved with virtual power plants but aren't using peak hour be- electricity because they're using their own battery, mm. that's going to affect the sl- supply and demand. And so the prices will come down. Now, what we need everybody to do, if you're going to contribute, is to ensure that retailers pass those savings on Mm. to everybody. Because there are some people that live in apartments and and other, they're in other living situations where they can't take advantage of batteries, they can't take advantage of solar, and so they must get their power from someone else. And so, yes, we're seeing patterns in the market where the price of electricity is really, like right now I can guarantee that the sell price for electricity a nice sunny day negative. is negative and so are those negative prices all those very very low prices being passed on to the consumer at the moment those high prices that um, someone has to pay for in the evening are being offset the resales are offsetting those by selling electricity when they're paying very little for it mm. during the middle of the day uh, and I'm sure via other methods as well so we, what yeah. we need is I suppose you know for everybody is to you know, hey shop around your retailers mm. Uh, make sure you're getting a good deal always. Can uh, I tell you a secret? Mm, it's not really it's a, not secret. a secret. So Osgrid, uh, the AER, the Australian Energy Regulator, have put a call out to all of the DNSPs like Osgrid. Or that's mm. the distribution network service providers, the people who look after the poles and wires, yes. right? So Osgrid have proposed to the AER, they want to do a trial of something called a community power network. 
Now, they're going to do one in, hopefully, hasn't been approved yet, but they're going to do one in the Botany mascot area, mm -hmm. and they're going to do one in Charmhaven on the Central Coast. They're both demographically completely different. You've got a lot of empty industrial rooftop space mm -hmm. and apartments in that area, very low uptake of solar. So this is where you fly in Sydney Airport and see all those empty roofs, mm. because industrial solar, you don't get any feed-in tariff. I didn't know that. No wonder there's no incentive yeah. to put solar on your industrial roof. Now we know why. And then Charmhaven is single dweller, you know, houses, uptake is around 30%, so kind of classic Australian suburban setting. So they have an idea that they're going to encourage um, people to put more solar on the roofs, including and especially industrial buildings. They're going to give them a feed-in tariff. Mm -hmm. They're going to, anyone that does have solar, they're going to give you a higher feed-in tariff, two to three cents more on your fit, on your feed-in tariff and encourage more people to put solar, Osgrid will put in some community batteries, soak up that excess solar, and then feed it into the out. grid and use it. <clears throat> what will happen is, and they predict, that basically everyone who lives in that community network, regardless of whether they've got solar, a battery, or anything, will get a dividend of between $150 and $200 every year. And it means that you're using then that excess solar. None, none's going to waste, and we're encouraging more. And it would they're estimating that that community power network that that setup with those batteries would meet about 30% of that network's, that small mm. network's needs. Now, Committee for Sydney have done some research and they said if we covered every rooftop in Sydney and put in loads and loads of batteries, Sydney itself could meet 75% of its energy needs. That's what their report says, which is extraordinary that wow. we could meet that with just those things. So this is very smart people who are working on this, which I'm very excited about because it means experts are really considering what we do with our grid. And of course, we've got very power hungry things coming on like data centers, but they're really considering the fact that we can look after ourselves. Imagine if Sydney, you looked after 75% of its needs and Sydney itself. Just rooftops. Is 50% yeah. of New South Wales needs is just Sydney. Mm, mm. <laughs> so we can do it. It's just whether the will is there. And of course, you've got to incentivize businesses by going, hey, we could rent roof space um, from That's you and earn huge amounts of them themselves mm. have revenue from that and then fed into the grid, used later when the grid at peak time needs it. So things are happening. It's a bit of an inside bit of info there. So hopefully it will happen. And I would assume that other uh, DNSPs are also pitching ideas like that. But I like that they're basically being told by the AER to do some sandbox trials. I love that expression, Definitely sandbox. I imagine sandbox. a whole bunch of energy people just sitting there in a sandbox, like mucking about and seeing what happens. But that, that sort of stuff is happening. So watch this space. It's very interesting. But uh, one thing I must say, when it comes to the rebates and everything, I do think about people who are renting. Yeah, same. And people who don't own their houses. Um, and so... Well, this, if this you... does address that. Yes, that, that does address it. So that, that's, that's really good. But even in the in living in the now, you know, are there people out there who own properties? Are you a, a landlord? Do, do you own properties that people rent? Are you able to help them yeah. uh, get access to some of this? Because I don't really think you know the subsidy scheme and all the rest is really set up well for those those people. And and those people, you know, if you're renting, pretty good chance that you don't have as many resources at your no. disposal either. Um, and so. You know, having to pay high energy bills is just at, adds extra pain to them. Another thing. And so, um, whatever you can do there. Look, I've I've got a little rental property, and I put solar panels on. Yeah, it. you did, and good on you. So, um, as a yeah, good landlord. Love it. No, it looks like batteries will have to happen. <laughs> do it, do it for your tenants. I'm very lucky, I must say. I'm lucky to be able to do that for someone. Yeah, and that's an awesome thing if you do that. Even solar alone would make a massive difference. Mm, mm. Well, there you go. Look at right. us solving all the problems of the world. Oh, uh, well, it's, I wish it was this easy to <laughs> But that's, look, I, I think it's the future. Solar, batteries, um, on, on a bigger scale, a community scale, and on just a local, just you as an individual scale, where we can is the answer to bringing energy prices down and decarbonising the grid. Energy independence. Sovereign energy for Sydney. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, I'm all for it. <laughs> there you go. Bring it.